question for you. Who are you? No, really, how do you see yourself on the inside? A role? A job title? Perhaps something a little bit deeper. Today we're going to look at three misconceptions of how we sometimes see ourselves, and more importantly, three attributions we often do not see within ourselves. But before we get to any of that, a little bit of nerd fun on what I like to call International Nerd Day, otherwise known as May the 4th Be With You. All that coming up in three, two, one. Let's go. You ready? Here we go. Oh, 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 oh. This one's the cool one. <laughs> I know I am such a total boy on the inside and a nerd, but come on. Isn't that fun? Hey, hey everyone, welcome back for another video. This is Jason and you know what? I'm on a mission to reframe the way that we see ourselves, other people in the windows of our world through the lenses of photography and videography. And say, if you're starting off with us today for the very, very first time, a warm welcome to you, number one. But also, if you're wanting to see yourself in the world in a little bit better of a light, then smash that subscribe button right now, ring that bell and come back for more content where I promise you, you'll be encouraged, uplifted, and probably laugh a whole lot too. Okay, about all of this stuff, about these three things, right? These three things that we're not and three things that we are. Let's just dig right into all that. We're gonna start off with what we're not, right? The first thing that you're not. You are not what you do. I'm sorry to bust your bubble, but you are not what you do for a job, what you do for a living. I mean, to quote Devo. How what we do is what we do. How what we do is what we do. You don't want me to sing, right? <laughs> I, I, I can go total nerd and freak out and start singing, but I'd probably shatter that lens and you'd probably run for the hill screaming, going, no, I ain't never gonna come back again. You, you don't wanna hear me scream. Anyway, what you do is what you do and what you do is not who you are. I mean, you could be the best ditch digger, the best parent, the best carpenter, the best physician. You could have been the top salesperson in your company. You could be the best stay at home mom, the best pastor, the best musician, the best whatever. But what you do for a living is not who you are, right? It just, it's not. We've all done a lot of different things. I mean, I can't count them on two hands. I've been a paper boy. I worked at a couple of different greasy spoons in high school. I worked at McDonald's. That was definitely a greasy spoon. I was a cook in the Navy for nine years, but before I was a cook, I was a bosun mate. And before I was a bosun mate, I was undesignated. And before I was undesignated, I was in nuclear power school where I failed out of school, right? I've done a lot of different things. Even when I was in the Navy, a lot of things I didn't want to do, right? But that's not who it was, right? And since getting out of the Navy, like, 20 some odd years ago, I've done a lot of different things. And while they have all impacted me in who I am, they are not who I am. What I've done and what I currently do is not who I am. Same can be true for you, right? So that's, that's number one. And that kind of leads me into number two. You're not a just a. Do you know what I mean? If you ever engage somebody in conversation and people say, hey, what do you do for a living? And then you hear, well, I'm just a this. I'm just a that. No, you're not a just a. You're not just the custodian at the high school. No, you're the 
guy who makes the floors shine. You're the guy who makes the bathroom sparkle. You're the guy who sticks around till midnight, one o'clock in the morning to clean up after the gymnasium after people have left all their trash in the stands. And you've cleaned up all the sweat and stuff off the basketball floor from where games were going on for three to four hours. You're not just the lunch lady who takes my kids money and gives them their food. No, you're the woman who says, how you doing today, Grace? And you really want to know because you really care. And you know what? The kids know that about you too. You know them. You know their first names and their last names. You know what makes them tick and what their passions are and what they aspire to do beyond graduation. That's who you are, right? What you do is amazing, but it's not who you are. And never say, well, I'm just uh, referring to what you do. Because again, the only thing that does is diminish who you are. It puts you down. Don't ever do that. It burns my butt. Absolutely burns my butt. But you want to know what really gets me going? What really burns me? It's when other people put other people down. And then like when we're insulted or people impose things upon us that they don't like about us. And then we then internalize those things, right? That burns my butt. It's happened to me too many times. It's probably happened to you too, right? I mean, let's be honest. We're human. We're capable of dishing out a lot of crap because we don't like to deal with it. But we got to learn to put on like a, like a raincoat or like dip ourselves into like that rain act stuff that we put on our windshield so the water goes off of it. We need to dip ourselves in that so the crap just flows off our lives because people certainly do like to sling it. They like to say that we're this or say that we're that. They like to impose their negativity upon us so then they can feel better about themselves, right? That, that's what we do, unfortunately, as human beings. It's so toxic. What other people say about you, especially the negatives, is not who you are. Please hear that. It's just not. You're so much more, so much more. And here's three things that maybe you don't know about yourself. Number one, you're capable. You are capable of so much. You are capable of so much love. You are capable of compassion. You are capable of forgiveness. You are capable of understanding. You are capable of seeing the world in a better way. You are capable of seeing people in a better light, especially those that you don't like or that you loathe, right? You're capable of seeing people in a better way. We need more people who say, I'm going to see the best in that person because when that happens, then the world gets better because all we hear all day is toxicity coming from the media and from politicians. We don't need any more of that. We need to be a people who see the best in other people. If we do that, maybe the world will change. That's reframing the way that we see ourselves and other people in the windows of our world, right? So I'm just, I'm, I'm going to put that out there. You're capable of seeing the best in other people. Now, in that same way, you're worthy of being seen in that way. You're worthy of love. You're worthy of forgiveness. You're worthy of compassion. Your worth is not determined by how much money you have in your bank. Your worth is not determined by how big your paycheck is. Your worth is not determined about what kind of car you drive or what model it is or how new it is. Your worth is not determined about how big or small your house is or your lot is or whether you live in a house or an apartment or a shack or a mansion. Those things don't determine your worth. Your worth is not determined by your IQ, how, how grandiose it is or how low it may be. Your worth is not determined by how many academic degrees you have behind your name or that you've earned or how many academic letters you or titles you have before your name or after your name. Those things don't determine your worth. The world will tell you they do, but they don't. Your worth cannot be measured by any human standard. As much as other people would like to tell you it can be, it can't. It cannot be measured by human standard. It can be measured by one standard alone, and that's the divine standard. And when God looks at you, he says, you are worthy of more than you will ever, ever understand. 
And I firmly believe that. You are worthy of more love, a deeper form of love than you may know. You are worthy of second chances upon second chances and second chances of forgiveness, of understanding, of compassion. You're worthy of all those things. Only God can determine your worth. And when he looks at you, he says, mm, that's my kid. And man, if she only knew how I saw her, if he only knew how much he is worth in my eyes. That's how God sees you. That's how I want to see you. So you are worthy. And with all that, you are unique. You were born unique. Whether you're an identical twin or not, you're unique. No one else has shared your exact DNA, your personality, your exact life experiences, your passions, your experiences, your talents, your strengths, all those things. When you start to put together the totality of who you are, there has never ever been, nor will there ever be anyone exactly like you. You're one in a gazillion, gazillion, gazillion unique. That's pretty cool. So when you look in the mirror and you go, huh, I'm more than the subtotal of anything that I've ever done. I'm not just, uh, I'm worthy, I'm capable, and I'm unique. Woo! That's pretty awesome stuff, man. That's how you should see yourself with light, with positivity. So many awesome things, especially on a day where we're celebrating May the Fourth Be With You, Star Wars Day. The battle of light and good versus dark and evil. You know what, we're all gonna battle that light and dark within our souls. Your job every morning is to get up and look in the mirror and say, I'm so much more. And when you do that, and you start to see other people the same way in our world, our world will be a better place. Anyway, I'm going to jump off, and I'm going to go hang out with my kids and my wife, and I'm going to go watch some Star Wars. So with that, I'll see you soon, and may the fourth be with you.